got the tips for early morning risers. Good morning guys. Today we pretty much are cleaning and organizing the house. We are washing the covers for the couch. It's a mess right now. But the main thing I want to talk about today is early morning wakings. The dreaded three words for parents. Elias has been waking up at 5, 5.30 and sometimes even 4.30 which is insane it's literally like a night time but I don't blame him basically he is synchronized with the sun which is not a bad thing it is a bad thing for us because he's not going to go back to sleep he wakes up, he wants to eat and then I feed him and then he's just wired ready to go ready to start the day and whereas I'm not and then I end up being like a zombie half a day and since we have so much to do as I showed in the previous video uh, it is very crucial for us to sleep well and yeah so I'm gonna address these questions today and give you some tips because we've been managing that very successfully we're gonna hang up the blackout curtains between our bed and Ellie's bed. We'll see how it turns out. I ordered curtains that block out light, sound, and temperature. For the light, it's obvious. We wanna block out the morning light that comes in the room in early mornings. We wanna block out sound and temperature as well because that way we could sleep with an open window. And then uh, a fourth function is that Elias would not be able to see us because he is clever now. He wakes up and stands up in his crib. If we are sleeping in our bed right next to him, he sees us and he's not gonna go back to sleep because he's like, come on guys, you're right here. Um, I need you, give me attention. This is really the struggle of signing a lease for a small apartment for a long period. And the housing market currently is insane and and Washington state is one of the worst ones. The prices, they just keep going up and it is extremely expensive to rent an apartment in the first place, but to buy a house is just, like in West Seattle where we live, one story, two bedroom, maybe two bathroom house. Plus the house is old as heck, one million and up. Not to mention the, the prices for renting an apartment. Like we live in basically like a luxury apartment building and we have one bedroom apartment and like, like this room and then a bedroom and then a full bathroom. And we are literally paying almost $2,000 a month. And that's like, that's a good price. Currently, our number one priority is to build our business and to save up so we could um, afford building our own house, but we're not going to buy a ready house. We're definitely going to build from scratch, from ground up. Like We come from Latvia, from Europe, and um, the way how Americans build houses are literally the same as we build like sheds. Yeah, so... We're okay with being um, a little un un uncomfortable with dividing and living in a small space. Totally fine. We love the building. We, we love this apartment. So it's all good. Where's that okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ellie just woke up from his second nap. His first nap was crazy long. Um, rarely he, he sleeps that long. He slept for more than two and a half hours. 
which was <laughs> yeah which was amazing mommy did so much while you were sleeping mommy had the time to work to organize the clothes right yeah and now i'm ironing the curtains they're here oh yeah that was a good nurse <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we got two curtains i already finished one while ellie was sleeping the second nap and now i'm working on the second one which is gonna be a little bit more challenging because this dude is up and he's very curious what's what does it mean to iron something um yeah Okay, so a temporary solution that I came up with is basically attaching a blanket in front of the window and it worked because we have those roll out blackout blinds but they don't do the job entirely so having like two layers that, that blocked out basically all the light and now I have the curtains here ironed and ready to go and I'm gonna take off the curtain rod move it over here so basically it's gonna block out Ellie okay so this is where we're at right now obviously I need at least one more curtain if not two and this is the material it's like a dense wet material on our side and that's dude what are you doing um and that's gonna like block out all the sound i can already hear significantly less echo that means that it is blocking out the sound that goes like that way and i like this cozy feel two days later looks like when the curtains are closed I'm gonna close the doors pitch dark there's a little bit light coming on there minimal there but it's real good okay and now about the tips for early morning risers Ellie talk about you <laughs> this is for seven and 14 month old Elias is about to turn one, which is mind-blowing how time flies, right? Time is a thief, that is for sure. As you already understood, the tip number one is to block out the light. And that's for a simple reason. Even with closed eyes, he can sense the light in the room. So it kind of like signals the brain to wake up. And even if your baby wakes up as early as 5 or 4, 4.30 as Elias used to do, like literally with the first sun rays, yeah, Ellie. Uh, then uh, you can treat that waking as a night waking because it's dark in the room. 
tip number two is put your baby down for the first nap after three to four hours from the desired waking time. If your baby wakes up at five, don't put him down at eight yeah, or seven. Avoid these too early uh, naps because that's not going to help adjust the circadian rhythm, which is essentially what we want to do here. So even if your baby is tired and wants to sleep at eight, try to move that nap time for later. So ideally, if you want your baby to wake up at 6 a.m., then that will be between 9 and 10 a.m., the first nap. And that's what we're aiming for, and that's what we're doing, and so far, so good. Which leads to the next tip, aim for three to four hours of wake time before the bedtime, so that your baby is not too wired. And also, next tip, avoid overtiredness at bedtime. And <laughs> my sincere apologies for interfering with the video. <laughs> Look at that the way. I had nap. I'm good. Well, you were in the background, anyways. Sorry, <laughs> Bert. You got to go, Bert. So if your baby is starting to show signs of tiredness, like rubbing eyes and yawning at like 6 p.m., right, Emily? Then uh, start your bedtime routine earlier. Our usual bedtime is at 7, 7.30, but there are some nights when Elias is more tired. So it's better to put him down at 6.45, let's say. Because if you're gonna wait until 7 or 7.30, he's gonna be overtired. And overtired babies sleep worse at night. So avoid that as much as possible. Okay, the next step is also related to bedtime. Avoid putting your baby down to sleep while rocking him. And don't allow your baby to fall asleep at the breast or while um, having the bottle. Now, I'm not encouraging that you do not cuddle with your baby. It is totally fine to put your baby down uh, to sleep with a bottle, with a breast, or by rocking him. If you feel like doing that, do that. Please snuggle away. It's just that your baby needs to learn how to fall asleep on his own. And if he's never done that before, if you haven't done the sleep training, and he's fully dependent on you to sleep, that if your baby wakes up at night, he won't know how to fall asleep on his own. When babies wake up at night or like early morning, they remember the environment in which they fall asleep and they're gonna crave the same thing. So if you want your baby to be able to fall asleep on his own at night, if he wakes up, you need to train him to fall asleep Elias, for example, he's 11 months, he sometimes and periodically often falls asleep at the breast, but we sleep trained him at four months already and he knows how to fall asleep on his own. At night when they hit the lighter sleep cycle and if they wake up, they have the skill set, they have the toolbox to fall asleep on their own and they're not going to cry and ask for your help and your attention and your um, and your breast and your uh, rocking and whatever you do or your lullabies, he will do it on his own. So once your baby has learned how to fall asleep on his own occasionally, it's totally fine if your baby falls asleep at your breast and <laughs> this is actually how Elias is falling asleep. Paulus is rocking him on the, on the bouncy ball and he loves that. And then he sings this, um, we call it as his uh, sleepy song. But aim to put him down when he's drowsy and not fully asleep. Otherwise, he will wake up and be confused. So that's a, that's a big one. And the last one is make sure your baby is well fed and hydrated during the day. So you could rule out hunger as the cause for early morning risings. We actually just found out some wonderful news 
Michael's two sisters and older brother is coming for Elia's birthday, so we will have a nice birthday party. We couldn't decide what to do for Elia's birthday. I was planning some, you know, decorations and stuff and like little celebration and we were thinking of inviting some of the um, a little bit older kids that we know around just to have some sort of like uh, an event or party because our families are not here. Um, we haven't made many friends as well, so we will be vlogging for Elia's first birthday, so stay tuned for that. All right, that is it for today's video, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will find these tips really helpful if you are struggling with early morning wakings.